I'm Cape Joel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Batman number 19. A damaged and bruised Dark Knight must pull out all the stops if he wants to slow down Bane. But how can you possibly stop someone so driven? Well, let's hop on in together and find out, shall we? All right, so as the comic opens up, we are treated to some Shakespearean quotes. I do believe they are from Othello, said to us by none other than and Maxius Zeus, an insane man and D-list Batman villain who believes himself to be the Zeus from Greek legend. Hmm, how fitting is it that they get the Greek man to provide the Greek chorus for this entire issue? Oh man, those are some highbrow literary references I'm spitting right now, and hard to believe people told me comics would rot my brain. So essentially what we have this issue is Bane running his way through the Arkham Gauntlet and past all our favorite and well-known Batman villains, getting a little moment with each of them wherein he proves he's superior. First up is Two-Face, Bane decides not to play his coin game and just punches him in the gut and has it over with. With some chemical assistance in the form of Venom, he manages to overpower the other two bruiser Batman villains that you may know of, Solomon, Grundy, and Amygdala, but you know, remember kids, winners don't take drugs. How the heck do the inmates even get out of their cells and why are they fighting Bane? Well, oh, and you're gonna love this, you're gonna absolutely love this explanation. Batman let them out. Moreover than that, he armed them to try and slow Bane down. Now, in theory, you can understand why he did this. A beaten and bloody Batman is trying to buy as much time as he possibly can so Psycho Pyra can finish the procedure on Gotham Girl and get her back to normal. But to the reader, and even to Alfred within the story, Batman is acting like a dangerous lunatic right now. Well, okay, more of a dangerous maniac than he's normally shown to be. And that's kind of the interesting thing about this issue. Tom King ends up flipping the script and Bane is our true protagonist from start to finish in this one, and it's Batman and the other Arkham inmates who are the antagonists. They even managed to wring some more sympathy out of Bane's story. The way he tells it as he's wailing on all these crazy people is he was done with the life of a supervillain. He was finished with crime. He just wanted to rule over his prison nation with the Psycho Pirate's mental powers to help soothe his many demons. But Batman came on into his home, broke his back, destroyed his peace, and because of it, Bane is back on the Venom now. After tearing his way through pretty much every demon, and C-list Batman villain you can name, Bane eventually makes it to a locked door that Batman set up with get this new god tech. Wow, he really didn't want people getting in. Luckily for him, the Riddler is close by and he says that Nigma can either crack the coat in 30 seconds or Bane will break his face and go look for the puzzler. This is a very small scene but it actually serves an important purpose of planting the seeds and helping set up apparently the next big summer storyline, the war of jokes and riddles. Bane eventually comes face to face with Batman and it's funny here, it just hits me. This whole tactic of throwing a bunch of Arkham super villains at an opponent to try and wear them down for the final fight, that's exactly what Bane did to Batman in Nightfall, and now the tables have thoroughly turned. Only here's hoping after Bane is inevitably defeated, he doesn't get replaced by some religious zealot with knife fingers. That would be a little much. Batman number 19 was a comic I ended up enjoying a whole lot, not just because Bane is one of my favorite comic book villains, period, but because it did a lot of really interesting things. I thought the issue served as a nice little focus piece for a bunch of individual villains that maybe Tom King won't get to write a whole story around, but it's cool to see his take on them. I also had a big smile on my face once I realized the very highbrow Greek choir that was used throughout the story was juxtaposed to the very lowbrow common denominator of a roided up luchador beating people up. Also, I know I said it in the previous issue, but I think it bears repeating. Really dig how Finch renders Bane. He's got all the veins and the musculature. It's good stuff. Overall, I feel comfortable giving this one an 8.5 5 out of 10, I had a really good time with it. So there you go, yet another Batman book that came out this week. For more Batman reviews and indeed more comic videos, period, be sure to subscribe to the channel or check out some of the other ones I have on offer right here. To keep up to date with new videos, as always, if you check down there in the description of this very video, you can find a link to all my social media pages. I got Twitter, I got Facebook, I got Instagram, I got it all, man. And hey, while you're down there in the description, you'll also find a link to Book Depository, my favorite place to buy comic book trades, and if you buy from that particular link, not only will you be getting yourself a nice little something, but a small percentage of that sale will go to me. You get something nice, you get to support the channel, everybody wins, really. So until we meet again, everyone, I'm Cape Joel, and I will see you in another video.